so uh, we got uh, uh, four of us to going to uh, cover some of the area. And obviously, then, um, my name, some of you know, Victor Chong, and I'm based in both in Oxford and London. And we've got Cesar Fascia and Giovanni uh, and also JP here. And our JP is coming from uh, the United States. So let me start with uh, the first talk. So I think that we always ask the question, and indeed, that I still remember a couple of years ago, uh, a Quantel uh, person asked me that, you know, is there any point to stay in a laser company? And, you know, why uh, probably not really something that we were going to do anymore, you know, in a couple of years' time. So I'm going to give you some perspective about that and also that declare the fact that, you know, I do have consultancy agreement with a laser company, but I do, my department also receive research grant both from drug company as well as a laser company. And recently that I joined uh, Bollinger Ingelheim uh, as the global head. So I'll give you the, a first case because rather than give you a talk on different, you know, uh, all the study date detail and so on. So let's start with a case first. It's so something that, you know, most of you are probably quite familiar with and something that is quite common. So a patient who is diabetic for a very long time and he is, uh, you know, in the late 20s and the control is not really brilliant. And then you saw the patient about two years ago and then at that time, the patient has severe non-proliferative. So you say, yep, come back in three months' time. And, but that was two years ago. So, so two years later, and then they come back with this. You can see that, you know, it might even not, unfortunately, might not projecting brilliantly. Then you've got new on the disc, but, you know, not looking too bad, you know, to a certain extent. The question is, what were you going to do? I mean, and so then I would say that, well, you know, since that we have some protocol as data, then we should share a little bit of those if you are not familiar with it. Obviously, you can actually uh, download the whole slide deck uh, yourself on the DLCL network and it's uh, openly, publicly available, so you don't need to take any picture of it. You can feel free to go to the website and you can download all the slides. And as you know, most of you know, DLCR is a US-based network and it's to a lot of uh, 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 us as that they're doing something what we call a pragmatic trial. People, you will not met, met the criteria for some of the so-called regulatory study but it's pragmatic. In other words, it's real life. Most patients get, get into the study and the protocol is something that is realistic that to be done. And it's all, both cover the private and academic practice in the US and, and more than 200 centers in the US is, 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 um, is involved. So with that in mind, they have compared ranibizumab with uh, PRP, so Lucentis and PRP. And again, I don't want to bore you with the fine detail that they're pretty balanced. It's a randomized controlled trial. Then most of the patient is type 2 diabetic. Most of the patient, uh, half the patient is Caucasian. And just some, like, slightly less than half the patient is women and so on and so forth. The control is not brilliant. HbA1c around 8.6 as you can expect it. And a long duration of diabetes as you expect it. So it's not, nothing special about it. And similar to visual acuity, mostly got pretty good vision. And because this is really talking about PDR, but because it's a real life study, they do allow some patient with DME to come into the study. So again, I don't want to bore you to find detail on those things. And you know, as you see here, about a quarter of the patient do have some DME and with visual loss as well. But I would probably take that 20, 23% as in here out of the discussion today, because those group probably need injection at least for, from the proliferative diabetic retinopathy perspective. So this patient might already need ranibizumab on baseline, so it's a bit confusing the discussion. Anyway, in the study, randomized control, PRP was performed in 98% uh, can successfully complete the PRP, and about more than half completed in one session. Again, this personal preference sometimes, some surgeons prefer to do more than one session but then previous studies show that one session is probably as good as four sessions if necessary, but probably more convenient. Again, as I said, I will probably want, oops, sorry, more focusing more on this side without the diabetic macular edema. And you can see that in the first year, around seven injection, in the second year, about three more, getting the 10 injections. So, you know, roughly that is kind of things that we uh, semi expected uh, to a certain extent. So, and as you can see that, again, 
not thinking about the one who got baseline DME, but those who got uh, without baseline DME, there is a little bit of a better with anti regger but it's really talking about less than two letter differences. So that is a kind of picture that we kind of expected. So you can do PLP in in one one or two setting, and and then you can also do ten injection over the two years, whatever whatever that you you, you choose to do. And the visual acuity difference are not very much. And then when you come come look at the main complication, and then you can actually see that you know well the richest hemorrhage rate is not that much different, although it's slightly uh, numerically better with the ranibizumab group. But the main difference is retractomy rate. So the argument go is that yes, the, you will probably bleed as often, but then you probably not bleed as severe. Therefore, then you know you don't need retractomy as much. So, but that was the main finding that uh, there's a retractomy rate is, is significantly different. But still, we're talking about four percent to fifteen percent. So go back to our patient. So in your head, what are you thinking? I saw the patient two years ago and asked him to come back in three months' time. But he turned up two years later with new vessel on the disc. So I can give him an anti-VEGF today. I don't think that is unreasonable. I think the studies show that you're reducing the retractomy rate. But will he come back in a month's time and will that keep you awake? However, that what happened if he turned up two years later, after one injection. And you know that the, when the PCMAP effect would have run out, might be after a month or two. And then you know that it'd be potentially a big problem. So instead, we get a PRP, and then he did come back for us to take a picture, and it actually worked quite well with one, PR, one session of PRP. And then we know that we can protect the patient reasonably well. Well, I think there's no doubt anti VEGF is very useful when you've got a patient who is very motivated, does not want laser, would be regular, would be thing that you can really happy to come back regularly. And I think anti VEGF have a lot of uh, scope for. However, that, uh, and you will get the two letter gain and you have less retractomy and obviously you have less visual field loss. But for a lot of patients that who are developed PDL, the compliance are often poor. And then because of the compliance, poor compliance, it's quite important to think about that possibility that the patient might never come back. And then the next time they come back, we have tractional detachment everywhere. And then you will think that the vision will lose permanently. So that's one thing. And is there a role for laser in a diabetic macular edema? So that's another question that we get asked very often. Well, a lot of people will say that, yeah, in the old days we do, now we don't. So let's look at protocol T. That is a recent study, just published it not that long ago, about a year ago, comparing the three different types of anti vegf So again, it's also a DRCR real-life data set. One thing I want to point out, or two or three things I want to point out, that is about 40% of the patients actually still have laser before they come into the study. So when I sometimes go to the States, I thought that no one do laser anymore, and then, but then obviously people are still doing laser to a certain extent. And more interestingly is even if you give a lot of injection, about almost nine to 10 injection in the first year, again, still anything between 40 to 60% are still have laser within the study. So when you had like 30, 40% that you start off having laser and then 30, 40% that you uh, have laser during the study, then you might end up like 50, 60% of patients would probably have laser during the first year. So when you think about something you never do, but you 50-60% of your population actually do have the laser, then I don't think that the laser company need to worry about that um, you know, laser machine will be still around for some time. Well, to cut a very long story short, I think a lot of, seen, a lot of you have seen this slide before, and I think there's fairly little doubt when you've got a very thick retina, uh, when the PC maps show a significant improvement. However, when those are thinner retina, then the difference is much smaller. And and similarly, that when those who have never have laser before, uh, then uh, just the combination of laser with an abyssimab are slightly better. But obviously, these are numerical differences rather than the statistical differences. So, so again, you know, there is kind of that at least that what one would argue that is even if you start laser on a naive patient, it's probably not wrong 
I wouldn't say that is the right thing to do. I think rather than the negative way of saying it is not wrong. And again, there is reason to believe that a naive patient in laser might be still be a good thing to do. So in summary, laser is still useful. PRP is useful for most patients in proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Laser is useful in particular some of the early diabetic macular edema with less edema. And there is still a lot of discussion about whether the how we combine laser with anti -regen. Thank you very much for your attention. And I would like to uh, ask Giovanni to give the next talk. And uh, we'll probably try to keep this question to the last, maybe easier, you know, if that is possible.